Hey everyone, I hope that you are well wherever you are today. For those that I haven't had a chance to meet before, my name is Graham. I'm one of the pastors on staff at The Heart. And I have the privilege of helping to guide us through these next couple of weeks of study sessions for our spiritual formation groups. It's been so good to hear stories from Josh and from other people as well, just about how God is at work within our spiritual formation groups, even in the midst of these really weird, crazy, challenging times. And so it's really a blessing to be with you guys and to be a part of this. We are going to pivot a little bit from talking more in depth about our values as, as you've been doing over the last few weeks and pivot to continuing the conversation about matters of racial injustice and racial reconciliation within the church and, and in the world at large. And we really felt like this was an important and appropriate topic to keep discussing in this space. And the reason for that is that we really want to be committed to this conversation over the long haul. We recognize that it hasn't always been at the forefront in the way that it needs to be. And we don't want to just react to whatever cultural moment or movement is, is happening, although those things are important, they really are. But we want to be committed to this conversation, like I said, over the long haul, whether that is teachings on a Sunday morning as appropriate, whether it's in group conversation like this or one-on-one, -on -one, it should influence the way that we serve in the community. And so by no means will we be able to get at the entirety of the issues involved in this conversation over the next two weeks, but we hope that it serves as a bit of a stepping stone, another stepping stone on, on the path forward. So what we're gonna do is watch some video content together, hear from some different perspectives. I'm gonna pose some questions for us that hopefully will be helpful and, and beneficial and, and lead to some fruitful conversation. And the first video that we're gonna to watch together today is a, by a guy named Jamar Tisby. And Jamar is one of the leading voices right now in the church, in this whole realm. And he is a Christian author, writer. He contributes to a lot of different platforms. He's also a historian or an historian. Is that right? I always get that wrong, but he's one of those. And he wrote a book called The Color of Compromise, and it's about a history of the American church and ways that it has at times been complicit in matters of racial injustice. It's a, it's a really good resource. I, I recommend checking it out. But the video of his that we're going to watch is put out by the Gospel Coalition, and it's not an endorsement of the Gospel Coalition and everything that they've ever done. It's not an endorsement of Jamar Tisby, but it is an attempt, like I said, to listen to some different perspectives. And in this video, he answers two questions. Firstly, what are you discouraged by when you listen to race conversations within the church right now? But then, what are you encouraged by as you listen to those same race conversations? So we're gonna watch this video together, and then I'll come back and I'll pose couple of different questions for us to consider, and we'll go from there. What most discourages me as I listen to Christians talk about race today is the fact that so few understand that racism never goes away. It just adapts. So I think a lot of people think of racism strictly in terms of segregated schools, race-based chattel slavery, um, you know, those kinds of overt forms of racism without realizing 
that even though the laws changed, people found ways to get around the law. Let's not forget that Brown v. Board desegregating public schools was passed in 1954. But for the next decade and a half, people found ways to prevent African Americans from going to previously all-white schools. And it took other court cases, for example, Alexander v. Holmes County in 1969, that put an exact deadline of January 1970 for the desegregation of public schools for it to actually begin happening. And then even after that, folks said, well, we still don't want to go to school with people of a different race. And they started forming their own academies and their own schools. And so this is a manifestation of the way race never goes away. It just adapts to new conditions. So it's a movement from slavery, the most overt, overt form of racism, to um, laws that institutionalize segregation, which we know as Jim Crow, to now what some would call de facto segregation, which is never inscribed in words. It doesn't ever have to use black or white or, or race or ethnicity. And yet still, uh, people are segregated. Our schools now are still segregated. Our churches now are still segregated. And so the, the idea that because, you know, some laws were, were changed, which are good, it affects behavior, and I want those laws, uh, but to, to say that the human heart has changed is erroneous, and not to be able to see the way racism manifests itself in systems and institutions is, is very um, disappointing. One other disappointing aspect I'll, I'll point to is the desire for some Christians to withdraw from culture. They see changes, whether ideological changes that, that, that we see in increasingly secular society, a non-Christian society, in some cases, even an anti-Christian society. And the solution is, well, we've lost power, so, so, so let's go away and form our own groups where we still have power, even if it's in just a smaller setting. I think the way forward, and this is coming from a racial minority perspective, we've always had to engage with a group that in some senses wanted to marginalize us. And so we never had a choice but to engage in, in the broader culture that wasn't always friendly. And I think going forward in the 21st century, Christians ought to think very critically about strategically engaging and withdrawing and what that means and what that conveys, especially in light of the gospel, the, 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 the evangel. How are we actually drawing others to us if we are continually separating ourselves from the people who, who need the gospel the most? As far as what encourages me about Christians and the conversation about race, I think I'm increasingly understanding that there doesn't need to be a lot of people to make a difference. Jesus talks about the kingdom of God being a mustard seed, the smallest of seeds, and yet it grows into a mighty tree. And I think that's what we're seeing. We're seeing a mustard seed movement. It is a multiracial, multigenerational, gender-inclusive inc in movement that is like nothing we've ever seen before. It has staunch biblical principles, historical, orthodox, biblical principles guide it, and yet it's very much a 21st century movement that stands in solidarity with all kinds of different people groups. I think it's minority-led. I think uh, women have a strong voice in this movement. And there's not a large group, but it's, it's, a, it's a significant group. It's a powerful group. And so I see Christians genuinely committed to racial reconciliation, truth, and justice. I'm seeing more and more Christians from the racial majority committed to these things. And so it doesn't take a lot of us, um, but it's happening. And I, I urge others to join the movement of God's Spirit in our day. All right. So some really good thought-provoking content there for sure. I want to pose three questions for us that will hopefully aid in, in some good conversation for you guys. So firstly, towards the beginning of, of the video, Jamar talks about the fact that he does not believe that there has 
been any kind of material significant change in, in the condition of the human heart, broadly speaking. That though there has been progress in terms of laws and, and policies, that in fact the condition of, of the human heart remains relatively unchanged. So my question would be, do we find that to be true? Is that something that we agree with or, or do we disagree with that notion? Have we seen or experienced things that, that would actually reveal the opposite? That would be question number one. And then secondly, Jamar also talks about what he sees as a, a desire on the part of Christians or churches maybe to actually withdraw from culture and to isolate themselves a bit so as not to have to engage with some of, of the really challenging, complex, broken parts of our societies and of our world. So what do you think of that? Do you think that there is that desire or that tendency on the part of the church? Or do you think that's unfair? And maybe have you seen groups of, of Christians or churches who have done it really differently? And then lastly, on, on the more encouraging side of things, Jamar paints a picture that we're familiar with of a, a tiny mustard seed that grows and grows and grows until it's a, a strong, powerful tree. And he uses that imagery to describe what he sees as, as still a, a relatively small, numerically speaking, relatively small movement, but a diverse movement made up of, of a diverse group of people that is really causing some waves in society, seeing some forward momentum. And so my question would be, what, what do you see? What do you think is coming from all of these different conversations that we've had in the church and outside of the church about race in this country do you see a movement growing do you see forward momentum what's your own perspective on some of those things so i want to let you have the chance to discuss those questions together but before we do that a couple of things one is that i want to read through a list of practices for talking about things that matter because I, I recognize the fact that this is a hard topic there's a lot of emotion here there's a lot of different perspectives a lot of people are coming from a, a lot of different backgrounds and these are practices that are actually developed by another church in our community but I think they can be really helpful and so I want to read through those quickly and then I want to pray for us because again we, we need Christ to be at the center of all of these conversations. So these practices, there's 15 of them, but I'll go quickly. Practices for talking about things that matter. Number one, respect start and end times. Number two, respect the dignity of everyone in the group. Number three, be present to one another. Number four, Listen to each other and to the Holy Spirit. Listen to receive and to understand rather than to refute or, or plan a response. Number five, make spaces for all voices. Number six, use I statements to avoid sweeping generalizations. Number seven, make use of silence. Pause between people speaking. It can be a good thing. Number eight, accord one another the best of motivations and intentions. Number nine, practice respecting differences and making space for different views. Let ideas that are maybe uncomfortable float out there a little bit without having to knock them down. Number 10, be self-aware. Number 11, don't try to fix other members of the group or be constantly offering advice. Number 12, respect confidentiality. Number 13, have compassion for imperfections in yourself and in others. Number 14, be curious and generous. Move from you're wrong to, oh, I, I see that differently. Number 15, 
we can't guarantee a safe space. We can and, and will do things or say things that hurt one another at times. So if someone does something or says something that hurts or offends you, have the courage to say, hey, I, I wasn't okay with that. And circle back around and work through it. And if you do something that hurts or offends somebody else, be quick to own it, circle back and, and work it through. Just some thoughts as you enter into this conversation and, and really any conversation that might be challenging in different ways. Let me pray for us and then I'll let you guys jump in. God, this stuff matters. I believe it, it matters to you and so it should matter to us. And they're not always easy conversations to have, but they're important. And so we offer these different spaces to you, this time to you. Would you be present in our very midst in these groups as we talk about these things together and learn from one another? God, would you help us to be honoring to each other and honoring to you? Most of all, God, we just ask for your help in figuring out a way forward so that we as your people can be reconciled to one another across gender and race and ethnicity, church background, whatever it might be. Father, we, we want to live well with one another, live in unity. So with these conversations help move us towards that end, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, guys.